Hello YouTube. I broke down and bought new tires and wheels. I'll post a link to uh, what set these are. Uh, I think they look pretty awesome. <laughs> I'll be honest. There is kind of a side-by-side -side view of the quote-unquote factory tire versus the new tire. And there's kind of a front-to-front -front view so I'm thinking that's going to lift the golf cart probably two or three inches, I'm hoping. So I may not even need to buy a lift kit. I think with the new wheel and tire being black, I think these would look a lot better if I paint them black. So I'm going to do that. Let's see this poor tire. <laughs> it's definitely seen better days. Patched and patched and patched, but it just kept getting popped. Now, while I'm doing these tires, I'm going to go ahead and replace these rear springs. I bought some heavy duty ones. These are probably adequate for when you have this as a true golf cart where you have no rear passengers. But since this has been converted to a four seat, uh, you know, four passenger golf cart, I've noticed. When you get two full-size adults in the back, these things really make a lot of noise, and I'm always fearful they're going to snap. Now that I've done one side, I can tell you it's a 9 16 bolt there, and then the rear, and then underneath are 5 8 and those are attached to that U-clamp. Those are things that absolutely have to be removed. You will want to remove the brake clamp here. There's a cotter pin on the bottom, slides out, and then the pin lifts up, and that'll move out. And that's because your new spring has to slide kind of through that space. Now, the old one is able to come out of there without removing the brake, but the new one is bigger, beefier, so it just wouldn't, I, at least I couldn't figure out a way to get it to scooch through there. The other thing you're going to need to do when you're reinstalling is you're going to need to have a jack. Depending on the step that you're doing, you may have to jack on the back of the spring here or underneath here to get things lined up. Uh, but having done it now, it seems like a pretty easy job. The problem I've run across on this golf cart is it looks like the rubber bushings are completely gone and the little metal bushing sleeves inside are tore up and so those were giving me a lot of grief otherwise those bolts should just slide right out but mine had to be uh, hit with a little penetrating oil and kind of hammered out the difference between the factory one and the heavy duty one. Quite a bit of difference as far as the thickness and sturdiness of it. And this is the things I do for y'all. It's a hundred degrees out here. YouTube today we are putting on the Jake 6 inch golf cart lift kit 
I've got a 2001 Club Car DS. I'm hoping that this is just straight up bolt on. It appears that it is. Um, I guess I'll find out as I get into this project. I've never done a project like this before, so I will apologize in advance if the video is kind of learn as we go, but we will literally be learning as we go. So the first step was to loosen the lug nuts, jack up the vehicle, support it on jack stands, and remove the front tires. So that's where we're at now. And this is probably one of those projects where once you get into it, you probably start wishing that you had replaced all the other parts while you've got them off of here. But I unfortunately did not buy all those other parts. factory piece and this is obviously the new piece and pull this piece and reuse it from the factory piece into here. camera battery died. The installation was the reverse of removal. I cleaned the wheel bearings and re-greased them. And, uh, it's easier to put the inner bearing on here first and then slide that onto the axle and then put in the outer bearing.
this is the driver's side. It's slightly different. You just have the one in the rear with the cotter pin. That bottom. That bottom's a 9 16 Got the three quarter bolt there. And then a 9 16 going through there. And then you put the you put the bearings on there and basically you're done. So these bolts all just say to torque them down real tight. The ones with the cotter pins have a hole in the bolt that line that hole up with the cotter pin and that should be the right torque. So this is the inner bearing here and what you want to do is clean them with brake cleaner. You can probably use Dawn as well um, but the cleaner you get this the better off you're going to be in uh, you kind of test to make sure it's still turning enough it's a good bearing uh, and then you want to force grease inside of here inside of here and then roll it along these rollers I'm just using this kind of grease The better job you do cleaning and greasing, the longer these will last, obviously. I prefer to do it with gloves just because that way you just pull the gloves off and throw them away, otherwise it's all over your hands. You just repeat the process with all the other bearings. So I think it's easier to assemble this off of the vehicle first. So you put the smaller side of the bearing in, the thicker side on the outside of the hub. So this is pointing toward the inside of the vehicle when it's going to mount on the axle like that. And then assemble your inside grease cap and it fits straight into there and then kind of tap it down with a rubber mallet to get it flush and I find that easier than trying to put these on the axle and then mount them These are the parts for the rear lift kit. I have to laugh that they include this sticker that you're supposed to put on the steering wheel that basically says warning that you know this vehicle is more dangerous now because it's lifted or whatever. I'm thinking, heck yeah! So the downside with doing the lift kit after doing the springs is I have to redo a lot of the steps that I had to do with the springs. For example, the starting point is removing the U-bolt and uh, kind of undoing a lot of what we already did. The good news is since I've already done it, hopefully it'll go smoother second time around. 
and I'm battling the weather here a little bit so we had 5 8 inch nuts that secure the U-bolt <laughs> and then to remove the brake line remember we pulled the cotter pin and then that locking pin will come up and the brake line will come off of there be out of the way when you want to remove the springs and then you just remove the spring those are 9 16 bolts and nuts I noticed when I started this project that you know these pieces here that were holding the springs there were no bushings inside there they just literally had the metal so that it could Jiggle around. So I bought a bushing set. And basically, I'm lube it up with a little white lithium grease in there to help slide because they see it's a very tight fit. They don't just pop in and out. Um, so the new bushing kit comes with the center piece too. So once that's in there, this should ride a lot better. Okay, it was quite a wrestling match. I'll be honest. But I did get the new bushings in there. Basically, had to kind of squeeze it in with a big pipe wrench. And once they were in, then I was able to put the bolt in the correct direction, which is bolt on this side and then the nut on the other side, or the, or the, what you might call the inside side of it. Anyway, so now those are in with bushings and a little lithium grease on them, so it should be a quieter, smoother ride. The next step in the instructions is to drill out the holes for the U-bolts. So that would be this one, and then it's not visible on camera, but it's the other one. Drill them out to half inch, and that'll accommodate the larger U-bolts. So I'm going to basically half inch drill bit through there and drill. Twenty hindsight, I should have bought some shock bushings. But really, they should have included them with the lift kit, since obviously they get pretty worn out. So, if I'm understanding this correctly this plate is still going to be on the bottom for the brakes and the new plate is going to be somewhere on the top I don't know how it's going to be oriented I think it's probably going to attach there with the U-bolt going around this way so it's going to look something like that but obviously that's going to push the shock way up here which that will cause the lift of the back end the instructions are not clear at all on this point here but this nut does fit this Allen key nut bolt thing, and I can't imagine they want that just sitting in there loose. So I would think you've got to tighten that down because that's gonna it appears anyway that it's gonna sit in there like that when this is all said and done. But I can't imagine that they'd want that just loose. And then it appears to me that this is going to fit in there sort of like that. And then the U 
it's going to go over that, and this whole thing is going to line up however it lines up. All right, so at this point I have these in just a couple turns with the fingers on the nut, front and rear. I've got this stuff sort of generically lined up. I'm gonna put a jack under here and jack up the axle and try to get all this stuff lined up. All right, so I put the U-bolt on there, finger tighten the nuts on the bottom of it. And it looks like it's kind of a wrestling match in between there to get that lined up. So I'm just going to pull on this axle back and forth until I get that kind of snap into place. And then after that, it looks like you just tighten all the bolts. i got to remember to tighten those upper ones, the lower ones, the shock, both of the U, and then the front ones. All right, after quite a wrestling match. I did get that lined up. I found that putting the jack right on there, just a just a little bit, not a whole lot of, of lifting, but just enough to kind of relieve a little pressure there. And then I was able to kind of pull on this until it got lined up. And then, of course, have your wrench ready, because once it's in there, you start tightening those bolts. What I did is I tightened a little bit on each bolt, alternating rather than tightening one all the way and then the other all the way. So it's pretty snug now. They don't give you a torque setting, so I would just snug it up real well. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-torque all the other bolts and reattach the uh, brake line and then move to the other side and hopefully the other side will be a lot quicker. I'm gonna have to loosen the brake line quite a bit to accommodate for the six inch lift. Looks like it's about a half an inch that I need to get this back attached. Otherwise the brake is going to be locked up when that's attached. So this is the final result. This is the six inch lift kit. I'll be honest, hindsight, I probably should have gone three inch lift kit. When I was first putting this together, I really didn't realize how much of a lift this would do. I was thinking it wasn't gonna be a whole lot above the tires. 
the major issue I noticed with it is handling. It feels almost like piloting a boat. Uh, very soft in the turns, and uh, so it's going to take a lot of getting used to. Uh, as far as off-roading, I may thoroughly enjoy it, though. I may be very happy that I got the six-inch lift. Haven't taken it off-road yet, so that'll be a future project. Give you an idea how tall this is. It really takes a step up to get up on there now. I will tell you though, I am thoroughly happy with the heavy duty rear springs. It really makes a big difference as far as uh, it feels much more secure now. That makes sense. It doesn't feel like something's going to snap when you've got rear passengers. So that is definitely a mod I would highly recommend if you have a golf cart that has a rear passenger and now the issue is the color scheme I think the blue and white really doesn't go with having those big off-road tires with black wheels so I'm probably gonna have to at least paint it like army green or something if not full-on camo